Are you a coder who gets rejected based on no practical experience or because others have a strong LinkedIn personal brand and you don't? Your coaching institute will hate me for doing this. But I welcome you to Code to Career 30 Days Challenge where I have chosen these 5 total strangers out of my LinkedIn contacts and have taken up the challenge to help them go from jobless or underpaid to well paid job that too without additional degrees and certifications in the next 30 days. If you are a coder and wants to get a well paid job, this is your golden chance to experience real project implementation from scratch that gets you a well paid job and builds your LinkedIn personal brand and also resume for absolutely free. So why just watch? Get into our WhatsApp community to experience this. Link is in the description. Now let's get started. Okay, any role plays you did? Any meeting you had in between? Or it was difficult because it's not a weekend? Anything happened with respect to use case diagram? Sir, I have did uh, use case diagram a little bit, but uh, we didn't plan a meeting because due to some people are uh, busy with their job and uh, we also have some other work. So it's not possible with the meeting. Correct. Yeah, I understood. I understand because this is not weekend, right? So it will be tough. Anyone who has done use case diagram and would like to show? Okay. Mary, Mary's expression says it all. <laughs> no, sir. I just started, but uh, I, um, the other video, I could see the video only yesterday, sir. So I just uh, wrote some uh, something from it and uh, I just want to modify the that analysis document and after that i'm planning to do it today okay yeah so let me allow ajay to share the screen yeah ajay you have the permission to share the screen for one use case we will have the sequence diagram also and yeah can you explain if user ask for help it will list the description if user register any command it will extend uh, it will go to new command and uh, register for that and identify that command and uh, here like uh, it will execute that command or function just a moment just a moment can you minimize the thing so that it can come in one frame yes sir. yes sir. Uh, a little bit more just zoom in a little bit instead of 100 percent make it 75 no that what that's what i'm saying just a minute, sir. I'll show entire diagram only. It is in a document. I'll no, no, not, not an issue. Go, go up, go up, go up, 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 still up, up. No, no, I mean to say in the screen, in the window, don't make it 100%, make it 75 or something. You have 100% in the thing. In the Google Doc, make it 75. Can I make full screen? Okay, sir. Make it make it nine seventy percent in uh, Google Doc itself. Zoom in the Google Doc. Zoom in. Little bit more. Little, zoom in. So that the whole diagram comes in one place. This is too much, right? Okay. Just so that that everyone can see whatever you are instead of scrolling, right? Use case diagram. If we scroll. The whole context may not come. See, it is hundred percent, right? Make it seventy five percent or ninety percent. After behind, beside normal text, yeah, ninety percent. Make it ninety percent. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
So now here is the point. People who are aware of use case can some, apart from Ajay, can somebody explain this diagram? Because you know use case, you read about use case. The thing is in front of you. Who would like to try? Explanation. Can no, not, I not confirm you. it is right? Not you. No, sir. Anyone else other than you? Shall I, shall I try, sir? Yeah, yeah, by all means, please go ahead. Uh, sir, use case is, uh, is how the system is going to uh, behave or response to the user request from user point of view. So here, whenever a user or a, a customer, when it is going to open, he will have, uh, he will do three things. He will either type, uh, yeah, he will type as a help, as a, he will going to for, uh, uh, register a command, and uh, he will either also can get the user command, user defined command also. Mm -hmm. Here we can't understand why, hello? Yeah. Here, the user, here our user has three things like help, register a command, or a user defined command are already there. This is the three things he may going to do. Either he can do the, uh, by typing help, he gain, uh, going to get whatever command are there, or he will going to register a command, or he will going to uh, use the register uh, already command which is defined by the admin or the programmer. When he will type uh, help, it will go and it will simply display this thing, which is a which is a normal operation. In register a command, either it will uh, it has three scenarios. Uh, huh. Here we have only two. It will either register a new command or it will reject this thing. And whenever the user uh, type a user defined command, it will. Here we have at the user defined command we have only two commands, set and get. So from the user defined command, the user can uh, do only two things: set or get. And after uh, typing the set, he will, uh, after typing the command, the system will identify that command and execute that command. And here, uh, the same goes with the get. By using the get command, he can uh, register. So he will, uh, when we use get, he will execute that command and get all the things by identifying the command uh, through some uh, command interpret function and all those things. He, uh, he will execute that command. And he will also have an uh, uh, option of unregistering. He will have only two operations here when it's come to uh, uh, get and set. Okay. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job, book a one on one call with me. Link is in the description. Anyone wants to try? The first question is use case. Should it be so exhaustive? Priyanka, what do you think? You, you use enterprise architect and you might have seen some HLDs, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I think some things are uh, misinterpreted here. Mm -hmm. uh, it should not be this complex. It should be very high level. Yeah. I think it has, it is consisting some of the low level things also. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Abdul, did you anytime see any low level, a low level design document or high level design document in Bosch when you were working? Uh, no, sir. Actually, yeah. Uh... I uh, have seen some design document with respect to hardware part, huh? but I didn't get any chance to see with respect to the new case diagram. Okay, it means only block diagram and all okay. those kind of things. Yeah, correct. Okay. Any particular reason for you not uh, having video? Um, sir, currently my bandwidth is not good, sir. So okay, I understood. Connected through my phone. Yeah. So we dealt with two use cases. One is register command. We discussed about it, right? 
and we also yes. have that counterpart which is which can be unregistered but at this point of time let us not think about unregistering comment what is the second interaction the user has with the system once the commands are registered with the system and commands are there now the system is up running now what is the thing that user can do with the system it booted up all the commands earlier that were part of the code they all got registered and the system is running application logic is there doing its job cli is infrastructure is now ready what is the other interaction that can happen with the system from the requirements document only you don't have to go anywhere requirements document is the one What is the other thing, obvious thing? Once you have the commands registered. Use that command. Yeah, what is the word that we use? Command today? process. Uh, so the second use case is command process. Use, use case is saying that with the system, how is the actor going to interact? That's it. See the diagram that I have drawn when I was telling about use case. Did I go into any detail? I discussed no. details, but I never put it in a form of diagram. I said that, oh, user is there, he's an actor, which who can be maybe a service personnel or even the user. Let us assume that the service person or admin person with certain privileges can actually add commands on a system dynamically adding commands is not so trivial if you understand using command is fine imagine you are on a linux shell and you want to add a kernel I mean, you, you want to add a system call or some command it's not so trivial right you need to compile the code also again are you getting my point mm -hmm. but once the command is there i can invoke it so Adding user defined commands is a use case, but the implementation is so complex and so critical that we are not going to do that. Unregistered, we, we ourselves told that we will not do it. So the remaining things are register a command and then process the commands which are registered. Maybe invoking the help command can be considered. In, in the current context as a special use case because otherwise nobody will because when the system is running the user will not get any concrete use of always running help command right what will help command will do at the, at the most it will say oh these are the commands these are the commands but i need i it says that okay get and set are there so the user is really interested to set something and get something. He can't repeatedly invoke help command, right? It's a very special case. Got my point? Yes. So use case, the, the simple thumb rule that I have I don't know whether I have devised it myself or felt there is there should be always a verb for a use case. Simple parts of speech. Remember again chapter 5. Parts of speech. Verb, nouns, naming an object, action, which is a verb. So the use case itself is saying that how an actor interacts with the system. When I'm saying the word or using the word interact, there is some motion in that right movement, which is action, which is a verb. So invoking help command, register command, process command, add user defined commands, max four use cases. In that help command is a special case, register and process. Unregistered, we have discounting. That's it. The use case is as simple as that. One box, one oval, 
actor one line name that are you with me yes that's it that's the use case it doesn't matter what is the uml tool that you are using and what all it provides that arrow this arrow and all those things yes it's a language and there is there are many rules uml specification keeps on changing and there are many things happening but the principles and fundamentals don't change additions will happen but the basic things they don't change so ajay you need to redo this and yes. you cannot put all the things in one diagram one use case diagram one interaction of actor with the system clear yes sir so yes. how many use cases did we did we complete register we discussed little bit exhaustively with respect to register right yes the user will uh, user has certain commands and then as part of registration the registered commands need to be stored somewhere where we are talking about maybe not a class now but some container which holds the commands if i would have talked about if i would have spoken about a class then i would say that okay there are these variables and we did it with crc right with crc diagram we actually got that i am going to hold the commands where do i hold maybe an array or something what happened i have a doubt one see yes so uh, from the beginning we should not have any command register or i mean that uh, a user can use the commands only after registering it is it something like that or yes, obviously uh, see when i say user registering the command do not see i'm not saying that user is registering the command when i say user here the developer already puts those commands into the c code it gets compiled and the commands are there in the system you cannot go to a file system and say that i will add dir right the dir is already there ls is already there copy is already there move is already there move move is move is there whatever other other commands if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description delete is already there do you go and add delete no no but that doesn't mean uh, that we are registering a command when we are trying to run a command right obviously when, when you we are, write when as a developer when you are writing writing cli code no, as a developer fine i'm asking uh, from a user perspective as a user perspective it is not strictly called register command user will now yeah. invoke the command and he, for him the yeah. special queue the use case would be process command yeah yeah that but still the boundary does not change it's a cli infrastructure only these all things are within the cli infrastructure it it is a pure command response mechanism and can the user not register his or her command yes it is possible but all the attributes of the structure the user has to put it somewhere then the system should allocate memory plug it into the infrastructure so that next time when the user invokes that it knows where it has done that and some application handler also should have been written there for that you are getting my point yeah then that is similar to the user defined command right yes that's why i told that's the user defined command and it's it involves trinkering something with the application giving it intelligence saying that in case user tells these things and the user only has to give the register the function that has to be invoked also he may not be the developer he may, he can be only the end user but he gets from customer saying that see this is the, this is the command 
and this is the ha handler so the use handler also has to go into application that's very very complex if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description okay. see for the so for, the for my simplicity words, yeah for the say scarcity of words a registering registration of commands is simply registration of commands but it is contextual quote on quote when i say user the moment when i say user the context should change when i say that registering the command that you as a developer you de decide that these are all the commands these are all the attributes of the command these are the handler functions that are there and everything you go and store in certain data structure or something so that next time the system gets compiled the code gets into the into the system it is running then you want to invoke the end the, now the context changes when you want to process the command still the you call the outside person as user only now they start processing the command by sending a command string copy file one file two but copy what copy means already cli infrastructure would have already registered there is already a handler there are already expected number of parameter count there is already a help string so in the process command you use the command essentially yeah now your your query okay so i will try to uh, give an example okay uh -huh. so let us suppose i have a cli interface ready okay uh -huh. and i am the user okay and uh, total commands there are three okay how do you total know commands some user manual or something has been provided uh, to me yeah through that so, I somewhere you know that there are these three yeah. commands present yeah there are these three commands present mm -hmm. uh, i mean maximum three commands can be there and there are only two commands now okay so that means i one i can add one command okay and which command i can add that is also given in the user manual okay okay so this this is registering a new command this this process is registering a new command right it is but who will provide the handler cli infrastructure doesn't have intelligence cli user will provide that thing right ah user will provide but how does it get into the application code then that means i can never register a new command i am not there will be always never. prefix you are that that becomes so complex that the you the uh, the application also should dynamically allocate some memory take the function code that you are giving very very complex yeah they it is yeah. not just cli gearing up the application intelligence has to increase how can you dynamically increase application intelligence is it ever possible No. It, it, it then, enters, no, it enters into some kind of mode like kernel module insertion, those kind of things. Oh, I am not talking about such a complex thing. Yeah, I understood. So, mm -hmm. from our use case point of view, uh, we are not uh, doing the user defined commands, right? You you can call it as user defined com user defined commands, but at compile time. let us say the system says that for file system for the files it's a, you are interacting with cli infrastructure and the back end is only file system standard things are there copy delete move and all those things let us say you added rename you added rename so you have the file system code you develop extra code what it means by rename and enhance the file system add a command to it and then register because file system vendor says that i don't know anything about rename this is a basic thing then you go to the file system code you implement that what it means by rename and all those things 
provide a keyword, provide a command called rename, add it to the user manual and give it to the end user. Now the end user can invoke rename and do anything he wants. Yeah, that I got. Like how, if we want to do, how we can do it. That I understood. That's how it is. Okay. I, I but are why. we considered what you are, you are, you are thinking that something at a dynamic way that I give my command and then um, application automatically gears up for that and solve my problem. Something like that you are thinking, right? When you are yeah. literally taking register command. Yeah. Yeah, it is possible. I'm not saying it is not possible. When you insert a driver in Linux, it is always that thing only. But somebody, the, even the driver kernel object is somewhere in the file system that gets inserted, right? Somewhere that code has to be there. Yeah. Uh, now, par in parallel, increasing the intelligence of application is not a toy program. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's a valid yeah. doubt. But contextually, the words mean this, the system is this. For the, you can use any other word, we could have used any other word, but these words fit the context appropriately. Yeah. So because even when the end user says that, can you help, he will raise a request saying that, can you help me registration of this command, then that comes at a service request. Then the development team, everything sits and they modify some code and they release a new software. This is what we are all doing, right? Software development is all, all about this. Even though the customer has intelligence, we cannot do anything with the software because he doesn't have source code. He will raise a re request. It comes to us, we develop and we provide a new binary. Make sense? Any questions now? Registering, registering command is done by developers. Is it right, sir? Yeah, as of now, you think like that, yes. Cannot access registering command. Registering command, and as of can... now, you actually don't at attach a user or something. Registering command is a mechanism because of which the database of commands increases or something enters into database of commands. Yeah. Now, when you come out of the CLI infrastructure, obviously it will be developer. Then this should not be here, right? In the use case diagram, because use case diagram is- That's what I'm depicts. saying. When you say register command use case, the user context also changes. The boundary is still CLI infrastructure. When you say process command, the con the context of the user, the context changes. The user is someone, but the use case is still valid. You need to go even top. You made one statement that it should be high level, right? You told that use case, use case diagram yeah. is at a high level discussed understanding. I'm saying much higher than what you are thinking. It's all context-based, what you are doing with the system. The same ATM machine, you go and draw the money, but there are people who come into the ATM and put the notes physically, right? Yes or no? Yeah. But then the system is still the same. The boundary is still the same, but the context completely changed. Okay, so it should not be uh, from someone particular's perspective, right? From like a developer's perspective or user's perspective, it should be it the is. general perspective. It is. And that's where the context come. That's how, that's what, that's where the context come. That's where, that is the reason why you actually have to draw a use case diagram. ATM is the context, ATM is the boundary, but some, a, but a person who wants to draw money interacts it with in a different way compared to a person who goes and deposits the money, physically puts the notes in, a, in that ATM machine. But both of them cannot cross the boundary of ATM, right? The context is entirely different. And use case actually gives that context. 
and that's why it is called use case. So the word itself is very well named called use case. How one actor uses the system, simple boundary and what is the thing. The issue is stemming here because for, for everything the, the actor was not changing because the context was not changing. And this is where deep understanding of requirements come. And that's why the first activity I gave was analyze the requirements. So when you analyze the requirements, you will understand that, oh, these are the operations which somebody outside already existing commands, then they use. But when the registration process, it cannot be somebody outside. It has to be a developer or somebody who plugs in that command and equivalent application code. The genesis of this confusion happened because correct analysis of requirement, putting the context in place was not done. Did you get the point? No? Yes? Somewhat? Did you whisper me or did you tell me something? Yeah, I told you I got it. Ah, you got it. Okay. Ajay did not get it, I know for sure. Yes. Princey is thinking, thank God there is a mute option. Sheikh is promising himself that I will not even switch on camera. Video also. Oh, some issue with this network. Okay. Mary, is it making sense? Did you get? It will make sense, sir. Once if I watch the video once more, sir. No, no, no. Don't don't postpone. It's not the question of watching the video. If you watch the video also, I am pretty much sure it will not make much sense. Um, the last technical session, actually, I understood what you spoke. And I mm. saw it the second time. So okay, I hope are... it will make sense when I see okay. this one. Yeah, yeah, okay, understood. You are banking on history. <laughs> Fine then. Yeah, you can unshare, Ajay. Yeah. Okay, now we are done with registration use case where the context, the boundary is still CLI infrastructure. Just that the user now writes certain kind of comments, also implements the particular implementation that has to be called, which will go and do something with the application in terms of getting some information or setting some information and then return the output to the user as a string back to the user over UART or SPI or whatever, or if there is any output device, throw it on the output device. Clear? Okay, now can somebody try to tell the sequence of operations what should happen? So we are now entering into sequence diagram. What do you think are the sequence of operations? And this is where I told you have to do the role plays. And to tell you an example, did you any time, look, I don't play cards, but I play caroms. When there was, when there was no one to play, I used to play this side, go to the other side of the caroms and again play that side. Right? So in CRC card technique also, when there was when there used to be no one, I used to put the cards on the table. I come and I say a dialogue here. Then I go to the other side of the table and I used to say, oh, okay, if that, if that command or that message comes to me, what should be my subsequent dialogue? And then I used to write that. And when this, when this sequence of conversations happen and I draw it on a timeline x axis x axis is timeline right the sequence of operations are happening time t1 t2 t3 
and y axis is the changes happening to the objects right when let us say if i have an array of three variables three array of three integers i i have user sending scan of and something he sent 10 for i is equal to 0 something something and i put it in second index that's a simple insertion operation array yes so the sequence of the now if i have to draw a sequence diagram i'll say that first input somewhere somewhere from some terminal or somewhere some number is coming time t1 then time to t2 and in another action is happening in the see in sequence which is population of array then in sequence again a return statement by a return value from the function saying that insert is true so return true which again go back goes back to the user interface saying when i read the flag or oh, number inserted if i read the variable is number inserted then i will be seeing the value as true which means the sequence diagram from t1 to t2 it went insertion happened return value has come and the value of is inserted flag is true till the time till the time the application is valid or application is existing or running the array is supposed to exist because at some point of time i can even read again what is value in index 2 right i can do that which is like processing for that time the array has to exist that array has to exist are you with me so which means there is persistence for that particular object or the memory whatever now if i have to this is real oh stuff right this is Okay, please confirm if you are able to watch, able to see my screen. Are you? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let us draw the actor here. And we are now trying to write the or draw the sequence diagram for first use case, which is register. So for your thing, I will not call it actor or user. I will say developer. Okay. To avoid confusion. There is some data structure or some storage mechanism. Only two entities. It's, it's very simple thing. Do you know what is this called? Priyanka, what do you call this? These vertical lines? In sequence diagram. You heard of it? Yes, no, maybe. Lifelines, I guess. Yeah, lifeline. Lifeline. Can I guess? Which, which means the object is persistent. So now I say. This is some data structure, okay? Maybe array. Okay? Array of command structures. So I say register underscore command parameter some struct maybe pointer or even directly the memory location making sense 
this is a global variable struct i'm actually drawing the because this is the this is a low level diagram right so i'm taking liberty and i'm actually mentioning this making sense struct cmp okay char star or some array of characters which is the command name again char star or array of characters help help string then this is a function pointer which is the command interpreter function and this is an unsigned int or int which is acceptable number of parameters yeah i pass this now type def c m d capital okay now cmd array of cmd cmd yes cmd If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. Now, moment I say this, and maybe I will not save uh, index. Let us assume I am not saying index. So I will whatever the first command register command comes, I put it in index zero which is obviously in this case has to be help. Next command I say developer will say rich command invokes this function. Then the next command whatever he passes. Okay, here rich command maybe this is help. So this goes and sits in index zero. Then he says rich command some other structure, some command. Let us say dir this goes and sits in index one then he says del it goes and sits in the second index because this is what this is array of structures and how do I define structure? My structure type def struct command cmd. Maybe I can have a written statement saying that is reg or each registered is equal to true. Again, if I query is registered not query, maybe this function returns, right? Reg command returns because the function might be here bool reg command. Now again, del command inserted is registered is equal to true. Simple use case diagram for registration of command just by the sequence of the operations I am talking. I already got the signature of the command. I understood that I have to have an array of structures. I declare a global variable for array of structures and I do this operation. Is this making sense? You have only one more week. After that, you have to get into the implementation. And it is a well-known thing across the world, irrespective of the company, that 80% of developers' time actually goes into debugging. You are no exception. I am no exception. So you need to implement, make it work. For the first time, it will not work. And you know all those things.
and you have a question will say yes do we need sequence diagram here good to have right that's where because of me drawing sequence diagram only i have my function signature also evolving otherwise how do you even get it to get to it class diagram huh class diagram how do you put how do you put class diagram tell me here inside class diagram you can put all the operations and calculus yeah you put it yeah so that that way your function name will get to find yeah. if it's just about function defining yeah it, it means that you jumped over sequence table and the sequence diagram is already done in your mind and you went in you have put it in class diagram that's the only thing doesn't mean the sequence diagram has not been drawn explicitly it has not been drawn you in your conversations you you understood that my class has to do this and you wrote that function you are getting my point see the class responsibility collaboration cards when you are actually doing it you are coming up with classes only ultimately what you told is true yeah. you yeah. are you will actually come up with classes only just that you explicitly don't draw sequence diagram but you play that role play and you understand that over a period of time as a sequence over a timeline what are the transactions happening how the processes are coming one after the other and functionalities are getting placed one after the other just that you explicitly don't put it as a diagram you say that oh okay understand you want this thing and i can give it to you as a pointer so which means my parameter has to be pointer plus okay there is a count you also want to understand which is the index so i my my signature should be also be having any unsigned int for in, index that's what you understand for crc cards right and yeah. then in the class you give it a name a, a meaningful name and crc cards are so powerful that when you are doing this role plays the naming of the functions also happen and that you will put it in the class ultimately crc card will give you that beautiful class only i am only saying that what are the responsibilities and what are the collaborations and those responsibilities and collaborations are nothing but member functions so you end up with the class diagram what i am saying is before going to class diagram you can actually do do these things maybe in a pure object oriented thing you can actually create class diagram by doing the role play and then go ahead and create a sequence diagram saying that oh now all the classes are ready every audience in the the, ho the hall is full now start communicating then the sequences start you are saying that process right that way of thing possible that is also possible there is no hard and fast rule but in a c kind of world when you when i felt when i tried to use sequence diagram before class diagram it helped me a lot because for me here i am not worrying about classes i just need to hold some data which are the attribute member members of the attributes of the class and there has to be some functions anyways i am going to see in i am going to know that in c language the functions are anyways outside of my structure or array or anything you understood what i am trying to say in object oriented world everything you look at it as class here i am not looking at it like that so that's why bringing sequence up front actually doesn't necessitate necess i mean does, doesn't necessitate me to go for class diagram here in this class which i actually do not want right do you think i really need a class diagram because i am not defining any hierarchy there are also different composition and all those things are also, also there right i am not even talking about it yeah is a relationship has a relationship nothing i am not even going there i want just that functions that's it so that's why i put my sequence diagram 
even before class diagram and completely eliminated class diagram. Your question is valid, but this is not pure uh, object oriented. I mean, where this is not pure class based thing. And this functionality is also so trivial that you don't have to, even if I do it as a pure object oriented class, wherein command is a class and all of this, I don't have to worry so much. Just with sequence diagram, I get it. Making sense? Ajay, Sheikh, Abdul, Mary. Sir, what are you talking? What are you talking? For the first time, we are hearing English, but we are not able to, it is not making any sense to us. See, the first, the, the, the primary most trait of a learner is to ask a lot of questions. And if you are, if your ego or shame is coming between you and your knowledge, you are bound to fail in your life. I can't help you. Sir, where CRC model appears on this sequence diagram appears? In what order? CRC, from, from car, CRC, the... there is nothing like CRC model. It's a technique to understand these responsibilities. Whatever I told reg underscore command, if you have, if you would have, if you would have created that card and you would have done the role play, this command would have, this function signature would have automatically evolved. When you say that, how is the user going to store? Then the registration system will say, I have an array. Oh, okay, you have an array. How do you want me to send and what is that kind of array? Then the registration system will say, boss, I am an array of structures. Then the user will say, okay, I will send you in a function, a pointer to structure. Is it okay? No, you send me the complete structure, not a pointer. The point that the thing that, um, that is very clear from your statement is that you did not clearly understand what is the CRC technique. which is okay, but you need to get over that. Okay. You need to get over that. You need to understand that CRC card is a technique to create or get clarity of requirement. It is not a tool or diagram or something. You, did you get it? Yes. Yeah. Today is what? Today is Wednesday. And we have only Friday where I can continue the same thing again once more for your understanding. But from the next two, next two weeks, you need to implement. You need to implement, test, document. And the test cases could be, I will say, design a system with 10 commands or 15 commands and then I can randomly access any of the commands. I will ask you, okay, send me your documentation and the list of commands you are supporting and what is your user application. You send me the both, the backend application, the demo code, whatever. You're getting my point? Along with the CLA infra, you have to send me the backend code also, which might be even if I discount that and I say that, okay, hard code in your command handlers, the written value. I'm going even to that extent. You're getting my point? Ultimately, the command handler has to go trigger something in the application and get the data from there. I say that, okay, I know that is too much for you. Forget about even the application logic. Just hard code certain values in the handler function. Even then, this process of asking, registering, then second use case of processing, process and returning the status. Those parts at least you need to test and give me, right? In your code. 
making sense if here you are not having or not getting idea then how will you code if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description if you don't ask questions my mentor used to say one day your questions are nothing but bugs which you don't want to which at later point of time you will anyways have to fix yeah yeah i uh, have one question so um, like uh, while we were, while we were creating the use case diagram we were, we didn't need to be very uh, you know clear with our the application or what get, what commands we are going to put but now when we are uh, going to draw the sequence diagram we will have to get a no, no, clear you have to be clear with right? the set of commands you want to support yeah see requirements tell what are the set of commands at the requirement yeah. analysis level only you should know these are the five commands i am going to use because otherwise wow, otherwise what is the fun of creating a infrastructure at the first place yeah. why how will you create an array of structures you can you create 10 array of structures and when, when the system requirement itself is having two commands set and get no right so your requirement analysis should have been already done and you should know that all right i will go at the max five commands at the max in the lifetime of the product currently there are only two so then i will go and create a static allocation of array of five structures where the first two will be used at three will be for later use whenever some development again happens and other thing requirements have to be analyzed to that level and that's the reason why i gave requirement document very very before and i explained them i have planted hints also and i know this will take time and for your kind information whatever you call that system design interviews and all those things this is this only they say google interview system design interview and all those uh, you would have heard right they take system design interviews this is what is a system design interview you do this you make it maybe 20 30 times complex then you are ready for even google and all those interviews also but this is the foundational knowledge even when i when when i was unaware like what it is i attended that scalar people will run that free webinars and all those things right sunday two hours three hours i attended one that low level then i thought that oh man it is what I have done years back it just that they they name it like this is what i understood and there are very very good books but unfortunately not so many books i found two books and that history is also like i was continuously watching amazon when will that book appear when will that book appear and i don't know that magic of that book they say that in in the whole of the world hardly 900 or 1000 or some copies are there i don't know whether it is true or not but i am very happy that i have one copy of those two books and the title is yeah, no, 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 no. Huh? sorry can i know the name sir yeah the name, name of the book is called clouds to code by jesse libert clouds to code it's a 800 page beauty and every page you will enjoy six months you say people don't disturb me and you will have blast of your life appreciating the beauty of that book shake yes sir same bandwidth problem yeah yeah sir and even i got disconnected when you are uh, 
saying priyanka about uh, um, mm -hmm. accessing the notes from that from there i didn't understood anything due to in and out of uh, video mm -hmm. can you explain little bit again uh, all those things from there uh, putting money in the it is difficult you are just taking the money out but have you think that how uh, it is complex to put the no, 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 i understand i understood atm thing right you are asking about the atm thing okay yeah yeah sir from there okay, now Okay, you you have ATM card. So when you go to ATM, what are the what are the sequence of actions you do? First, I uh, see the display and uh, inter, uh, then I select language. After that language, it will uh, ask me to enter. Um, uh, no, no. First, I will uh, enter my uh, ATM card. Then it will ask me in uh, wait, English wait, wait. language. First, first, first thing. What is your first interaction with the system? Plug in the card. Pl yes? Plugging the card. Wait, wait. Stop there. This diagram, if you want, take a screenshot. I'm going to remove this. Wait a minute, sir. Okay, done. Yes, sir. Okay, let us take his example. Okay, this is some ATM machine. Okay. The user comes here. Now see, the first, the use case is to use the ATM machine. This is the big use case. But the boundary is, everything happens within the boundary of ATM only, right? It cannot go outside. Yes or no? So the yes, first, oper first operation is, leg underscore, card you went card which is obviously one card bool plug card because once you insert the card the system should somehow indicate that the card is accepted right it has to come as true that the card has been accepted yes or no Yes, sir. It will show account number. Whatever. Account number or that blinking of that LED somewhere will stop. You get an indication, visual or some indication that the card has been accepted. Yes or no? Mary, yes, are sir. You, are you understanding, Mary? Yes, sir. Okay. So now you see, you are a person who is willing to withdraw some money. That's where you have insert plug in plug the card. Okay, now let me bring another use case. Same user, same ATM machine. And this is not coming at an ATM machine, this is coming as washing machine. Okay. This is the boundary of that ATM machine. But I have now a person with a briefcase of in placing the notes here inside the ATM machine. Will he insert a card? No, right? No, no, sir. Uh, he will have something called some key here will be there, some plug will be there, some lever or whatever and he, he will lift the whole cabinet up. So that he can access the internal container to put the money. So he will say, bool open cover. No parameter. Doesn't need, right? He's only one ATM. But the bool should, bool is something like, okay, successfully opened. Same boundary. 
but the context changed. But, uh, but as per the user terminology, sorry, as per the use case terminology, I will call this person actor. And this is a use case of open cover or deposit money, whatever. See, the bigger use case is deposit or load cash, whatever, load cash. But the earlier use case was withdraw money. Now, when I say the bigger use case of withdraw money, this is how I will pictorially represent. Ajay, you should understand here. Then your confusion will go. So then you will not have, have that network of highways. This is use case. This is ATM is the boundary. There is one interaction and I call the use case withdraw money. Got it? Sorry, I can write me right here. Withdraw money. See, at, at a very high level, the moment I am saying withdraw money, this cannot be the person who will load the ATM, right? It's common sense. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. And at the same time now, the same use case, Same, I call him again as per the use case terminology, actor, same ATM machine, whatever the ATM machine, the boundary is also defined as ATM machine. Now I draw this use case as withdraw money, not, dip, not load cash. Then this person cannot be that bank person, right? It has to be a common user. Make sense? Or common sense? Yes. yes, sir. Yeah, that's this is what is the use case I'm saying. This is where when you are designing the ATM, you should understand the requirements very clearly. That's where I told you to go and read requirement document in depth. Is it clear now? That's what I was discussing. Yes, sir. Sir, here you have removed the small, uh, small, small thing that login, this and that. So you overall term it as a withdraw deposit. So the that is the use things... case. Then there are steps in the process. They, that you will get it in the sequence diagram. And to get that steps is what I told to the role play of CRC and using the technique CRC. That yeah, login, yes, insert the card or plug in the card type in your pin, select the language, all are different steps, sequence of steps to be followed within that use case. That's why I showed you the sequence diagram. And those, sequ those sequence of steps you can very easily understand by using CRC card technique. Now, is everything clear in front of you? Is it making sense now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir how techniques have to be used, how you should sit back, relax. You need to draw so many diagrams and all those things. This is a very, very trivial requirement. In real life, the requirements would be so complex. And let me tell you one more thing. Actually, when you are trying to design a system, we already abstract so many things in the world. If you really try design a system for every aspect of a system without abstracting something, you will go crazy. You will you nobody can design a software system without abstraction. You have to assume some things, but the abstractions and the assumptions need not should not be too heavy or I mean too abstract. But to certain level of abstraction till you are able to control and hold that complexity. Otherwise, the outside world is so complex.
these are very high level concepts like abstraction and all those things and i'm not talking about abstraction and all those things from the object oriented principles yes they are part of abstraction and all those things are basic object oriented principles but when you feel and when you start designing the system you actually appreciate this the beauty of these things big big companies people stand before whiteboards and spend hours and hours and hours to design complex systems because the external world is really so complex it is not trivial what i am doing is i cannot even say it's called tip of iceberg it is nothing it is just that you need to travel through this path once Got it? Any yes, questions? Sir. The questions that you ask now are your friends. The questions you keep for yourself, they will become your enemies later point of time. To conclude, uh, sir, you told us, sir, about uh, command handler and all those things. So, so definitely, we need to go with some kind of, um, uh, uh, like a, uh, a kernel or OS concept, or if we can do <laughs> it with C. No, no, no. I already gave you right. I gave you the command structure also. Type def command. I already gave it to you. Define that. Go with an array of commands. Okay, Have a sir. structure which will which represents a command. Create an array of structures and do it. I see. Even if you don't create so many commands, just to create help command man. I am simplifying much more. Priyanka, are you able to understand what I am trying to say? Don't even go for an array. So your registration is nothing but instantiating that object. Structure like you variable of karoge instantiation. Okay, and I, I, am, I am saying it okay, that is itself is registration. No, even two or three, I mean, the array of two or three size, even I am not saying that your register command is nothing but create a variable of the structure. You are done, yes or no? Are you you understand what I am trying to say? Yeah. Yes, sir. Let that be help, yes. proof or help. So replicate it or extend it for one more index, then one more index. Go step by step. But even let me tell you, I'm being very candid and honest. If you don't understand what I'm speaking, what is happening here, you will go ahead and you will create one command. Okay, type def struct some command, something, something, command, and you say command my command. After that, what? After that, what? Even for that, you need to understand what is happening here. You need to come to the sequence diagram. And that too, I am saying about only registration. The next use case is process. So even in that process command, now you need to know how I play with the container, the so-called container that is holding the command. Make sense? Yes. Yes, sir. See, I now strongly feel that you need you you people need to talk a lot with you. Priyanka seems to be very confident. All four of you pounce on her. Saying that Priyanka. I think you are understanding something. Yeah, then it will be like, if I'm understanding wrong, I will make everyone's understanding wrong. He cannot do, do <laughs> Yeah. Yes, we all will have same code, same everything. No, no, implement, I'm not saying share implementation. Share idea. And that command structure, 
if you see that requirements document, it, it is already there. I told store it in an array or a similar data structure. And I also told that a command should have a name, it should have a help string, it should have a command interpreter, and it should have an expected number of parameters. There is nothing that is hidden there also, right? But how you write a function that manipulates these things, that you don't have to share. You're getting my point? Okay, now for people who are thinking, boss, is this really embedded? Or what are you telling? See, the embedded element can be very easily inserted into this that your CLI infrastructure, if it has to talk with outside world, use an UART or I2C and write a driver. If you write a UART driver, which will carry that string commands, or sorry, the command strings. Ultimately, the command string, the string has to travel right back and forth. That can happen only in certain medium. It could be UART or I2C or something. Do it. The reason why we are going to these kind of things here as part of embedded systems is precisely for a reason. Because when you go outside and you get into any company, the low level, there will be different teams for low level drivers. There will be an application team. There will be a middleware team and all those things. You need to know the stack of complete development. There will be driver team. There will be middleware team. There will be certain maybe libraries. I don't know some abstraction again, which can be which can be called middleware. But I am saying maybe some custom libraries and all those things, some open source libraries. Then you will have application. This is a normal stack that is there everywhere, and below this, anyways, you have the hardware. As an embedded engineer to get into any company, if you have an understanding of this stack, you can go anywhere. And Priyanka, where do you work? Hi. Which part of the layer do you work? In the application layer and the driver layer. Okay, you work here and you also work here. So the middleware stuff and all those things, file systems, blah, 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 blah stuff and all these are already done for you. But our, our, some other team looks at it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll conclude the call now. Keep your questions with you. Yeah. Let them multiply, let them give birth to more questions. If you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job book a one-on-one -on -one call with me link is in the description check abdul no no question sir i understand you understood means yeah. uh means uh, all the things which we are invoking we need to do it through the uh, uh, normal c function only means mm -hmm. whenever the command is uh, there it's uh, after registering and uh, and it is after that it is processing mm -hmm. to use that command we need to do it through normal c program only yes see there are two ways to solve these kind of problems okay i'm i'm as you know there is a brute force approach and all those kind of things right what I told you is a systematic, maybe you can say a runtime analysis or whatever they call for algorithms. And there is another way called brute force. I have given this kind of requirements and I have seen actually, not this requirement. In my company, some young chap comes and I had these, I had two people from uh, NIT Bhopal. Yeah, I had two people and in, when I was in another company, there was this guy from IIT Benares. Some, some, he, 
in two different contexts, in two different companies, but they got something similar. They went ahead and they wrote a lot of code and made it work. There was no design. It can't scale up, but it does the work. Very difficult to maintain. It does the work. Something you try, you try to do something, the system breaks, but it does the work. Brute force approach. Because, I have, because why, why I'm saying this? There are go-getters out there who are your competition. They just go and they give their full heart and soul and they crack the problem. They come with a solution. Then we sit together, we pull out the logics and other things that they successfully implemented, organize them lead, neatly, and then they feel that, oh, sir, I understood now how a system has to be, how a code has to be designed that can be scalable and all those things. Now, why am I saying this? They are part of your competition. So before you even smell a job, they would have already eaten your job. I am not joking. They will clean the plate and go. The world outside is like that. So you should be so aggressive, very strong with your fundamentals, C coding or something. And then you should be that ferocious go-getter and get it done. You, you should feel restless until you don't solve this. You, you, your world is literally stopped for you. Only this song has to be at the back end. We all had this thing, right? Some song sticks our mind. And even when you are working and all those things, the new hit list song comes. It will be always at the back of our mind running all over the day, right? The tune. It should be like that. Your obsession to solve the problem should be at that rate and at that level. Then only you can tackle. Then only your career will be really what it can be and what it should be. Else you will be in the queue and you will also not be in the queue because the queue is only seen from the front. Nobody will see the queue from outside, I mean from the side. The counter is there at the beginning of the queue, not by the side of the queue. So the world will serve what is the good things at the beginning. The last people will get what is left over. So it's for you to design, decide. Yeah. Abdul, Sheikh, Mary, making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you need to decide where you want to be in the queue. Okay, I will share, I will upload this meeting with video recording. Once it is done, I will let you know. So see you tomorrow. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.